Today we're going to be learning how to fill out nav logs. And usually flight plans start and end greater than 50 miles. And usually your first checkpoint is going to be where you're taking off, and you put that right here. And usually checkpoints are 10 to 15 miles apart. And say, now we'll move to the tripod with the camera. Right. Now they have our sectional out. This is Devil's Lake, and this is Grand Forks. Altogether, it's around 75 miles apart, which is a good flight plan. After you've done, finished drawing out your line, you then want to measure 10 to 15 miles for a checkpoint, which is this. Uh, good checkpoints, by the way, are lakes, rivers, creeks, islands, dams, lighthouses and of course towns and other easy visible things. Now what I've marked here is the town of Doyen. And that is about 14 miles away. That's a good checkpoint. And by the way, when you're doing checkpoints with lakes, because we do in fact have a lake here, you do not want to use the center of lakes, you want to use more of the edge. And so you end up writing your second checkpoint, which is Doyen for me. Next, we'll be going with our uh, frequencies and identifiers. All right, so my voice is changing temporarily. Um, I'm going to show you how to find frequencies on the map, um, go a little bit more detailed into that. All right, so this is a map of Grand Forks, uh, my favorite airport, because uh, I've been using it so much in this tutorial video. Um, so, so what you're finding for for the frequency is is your uh, is your frequency over here. So, um, like I said, only airports with VORs are going to have uh, frequencies that you need to do. Um, so, like if you have a checkpoint that's a river, it's not going to have a frequency because it doesn't have a VOR, so you just put an X. And same with the identifier, you just put an X. So the frequency goes in this box. Um, so let's say the first checkpoint was KGFK, my favorite airport. So then we would go look at the uh, sectional, and I've got it super zoomed in here. It's on my computer, so it's easy to see here. Um, so where you're going to find that is you're going to look for the blue box that says the name of your airport. It's going to say Grand Forks, which is the name of my airport. It's also going to have the, um, the, the call sign, which is GFK. Um, anyway, so that box is up here. And then you're going to want to look for the frequency, and that's easy to find because it's right there. So then you'd plug 114.3, in this case anyway, into the frequency box. So 114.3. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do, it's going to be kind of hard for me to draw, but I'll try. Um, is you're going to have to find the identifier, and that's the Morse code identifier. So when you're in the plane, it'll tell you whether or not the frequency you have chosen matches up with the frequency that you want. Um, so to find that, it's in the exact same blue box, um, but it's over a little farther. Um, it's over here. So it's dash, dash, dot, 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 dash, dot, dash, dot, dash. So I'm going to move these side by side so I don't have to change between screens. Um, I don't really have a lot of room in the identifier box, so I'm just going to move it over. You would you would um, put it in the identifier box, though. So it's dash, dash, dot, 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 dash dot dash dot dash so that's basically how you do it except you'd want to put it in the identifier box which is right there um, I didn't have room to write it so
So that's how you find frequency and identifier. And for course, which we'll be moving on to next, that would be where you put your uh, heading out from start and in from end with your VOR. But if you're not going to be using a VOR, you just put an X in the box. OK, up next, we're going we're gonna to do altitude. And for altitude, you want to consider weather, which is like all the storms, obviously. If they're going to be severe. Obviously, you probably wouldn't want to be flying in them. But if they're going to be moderate, you also want to put in uh, the factor of the cloud level, whether the ceiling is above or below where you've chosen to fly at. You'd probably want to add that into a uh, factor of what you choose for an altitude. And so when you look for your altitude numbers, you'd want to look on your map. You'd want to look for which grid box your um, altitude number falls in. So for a flight here, you'd look for the longitude and latitude lines, which you probably won't be able to see on the camera. But they all create boxes. Which for our flight, we have a box right around here on the latitude and longitude lines. And this will be our highest altitude point throughout our entire flight, which is 3,100 feet, which will end up having an obstruction which will go up to 3,100 feet, so you obviously want to be aware of it, and make sure you at a safe height to not have to worry about that obstruction. Once you find your altitude number, you'll want to add around 500 feet just for safety, and if you're flying east, which we are, which is a heading of 0 to 179, you'd want to be in the odd thousands. And for west, which is a heading of 180 through 359, you want to be in the even thousands. For odd thousands, you'd be like 1,500 and 3,500. For even thousands, it'd be like 500 and 2,500. So after for ours, we end up with 3,600, which is above the uh, height we'd want to be at, which is 3,500, so which you'd end up just skipping to the next. So here's our little diagram. So you got 1,500, 3,500, 3,500, and down here, which you can't see, is 75. Our altitude goes above 3,500, so we'd want to skip to the next one for safety and fly at 5,500. After you find your altitude, you just place that number in this box. Next, you'll we'll go on to wind velocity and direction, as well as temperature. Usually these are given by your instructor if you have one. If not, you can find them with the flight service station or the FSS. And you just apply those numbers to wherever they uh, go inside here. Next, we'll be uh, going to our true airspeed. Usually this is given. If not, it's just a comfortable speed, which you probably know by heart from for your airplane. You just fill that in in this box. Next, we're going to be going with true course. You would find this using your sectional. So to find your true course, you need to find a longitude line, which are the ones that go up and down, and your course line. So let's say right here. We have a longitude line that intersects with our course. To find this, you'd want to line up your plotter. In the plotter, you have a dot right in the middle. You'd want to line that up with your intersection. And then after that, you'd want to line up the edge wings of the plotter with your course. So that it correctly finds true course. And you'd like want to determine whether you are going east or west. If you're going east, which we are, you'd want to use the outer numbers. So this is what we would be using. If you're going west, you want to use the inside numbers, which would be right in here. So to find that, you'd find the angle in which your longitude line hits your protractor on your plotter. 
for us, we will have 100 since we're going east. And after you find your true course, you then just fill that in this box. Next, you'll be finding your wind correction angle, which would be then placed in this box. To find that, you'll be using your E6B, and it'll be at the back of the E6B. There is a clear step-by-step -step instructions on the back, which will there show you how to find it. 